welcome back. In this video I'll finish prepping this engine ready for final reassembly. So just with a cam cover, uh, I've just given it a bit of a clean up here. You know, I'm planning to turn this smart car into an off-road sort of vehicle, but even so, it's just the way I like to do things, make sure it's nice and clean and looks presentable and it makes it easier for fault finding later. So a bit of degreaser. I'll give the block a bit of a sandblast as well, uh, given that it's completely stripped down. Obviously, then I'll make sure I uh, rinse it out properly and get all the grit and so forth out. Uh, for the cam cover, I decide I'm going to paint this with a wrinkle black. So I just put a couple of coats on. It needs to go on reasonably heavy, otherwise it won't wrinkle properly. And the process takes probably half an hour or so. So I put that on, and uh, this is what it looks like. Come up really nice. And then what I do, once that dries, just that smart car symbol uh, logo and the, and the writing, I just scrape off, sand down, just to finish it a little bit. And I think that'll look pretty good. So with the cam cover done, um, what I do then is I bought myself a brand new set of pistons because of that one failed piston. I've had to make these special tools here just in the lathe so I can press them out because it's quite a heavy press fit and um, so one of them goes on each side of the piston. I don't have a press at the moment, so hydraulic press would be the way to go, but I just do it in a big vise and this works fine. So I'll do this with all three pistons. Now, given the damage, uh, I could have just replaced one, but I would have had to go oversize and just rebore one cylinder, which didn't make sense to me. So I decided to rebore all three cylinders the same size and I've gone half a mil over. Uh, just to be sure I could clean that one bore up. So in this case, I'll have three matching brand new uh, pistons, bored and honed. So just reverse that when I put the new gudgeon pin in. Uh, again, obviously it's press fit. Uh, quite good pistons. These ones, I think I got these from Germany. Um, smart car parts aren't that easy to find, so it's taken me a while to get to this point, but I finally found some. And... Uh, they went on pretty well. So just check it moves freely. Uh, as I said, I've done this to all three pistons. And then what I do is I just fit the new rings and um, measure the gaps beforehand just to make sure that the right end gap. So they were all good. Uh, the bottom all ring has got like a separator uh, ring and then two thin rings one on the bottom and top of, of that then there's a middle ring and the top compression ring so I put all these in and uh, in the next video I'll show you the actual install but these are just getting this whole engine ready to uh, finally put it back together and get it running again so as I say pretty good ring set that um, what I decided to do now is pull the head completely apart. Uh, while I was waiting on parts, I figured I might as well do this just to see. Whilst it looked like it was in really good nick, I just wanted to check. So I pull out all the uh, bow buckets and the bolts and the valves and everything. And you need to make sure you mark these because uh, on a smart car, the valve shim is actually built into the valve bucket. So if you mix these up, you're going to have different uh, valve clearances and you, you definitely don't want to be messing about with stuff like that. So I mark them, inlet, exhaust, and then um, once all of the valve buckets come out and the head bolts, then what you need to do is remove uh, the springs. And to do that, you need a spring uh, compressor. So this one here is one I made myself ages ago. And it seems to work on all the engines I've, I've rebuilt so far. And all this does, it pushes on the retainer washer at the top, compresses the spring to reveal the top of the, um, the valve itself. And the top of the valve has two little half clips, moon clips, or called a number of things. But once you free that up, I just use a magnetic uh, screwdriver, or you could just use a, the screwdriver end itself. But with a the magnet, they just literally come straight off. And once those two clips are out, uh, unscrew the spring compressor, the spring will extend and basically just you'll be able to take the spring out as you'll see here. The valve will just push out and the only thing you're left with 
is uh, the valve guide is actually in the head. It's a press fit in the head. And on top of the valve guide is the, the valve stem seal. So I'm going to replace those as well. So you can just see here, pull out the spring. Now on a smart car, that spring can go either way, but some cars, uh, they do need to face a certain way. Pull the valve out, they're quite small valves, and you can see, I have a quick look at the wear mark, just to be sure uh, that they're in good nick. Now while I've got it stripped down at this point, I'll put the new exhaust gasket on there, mark off um, the actual head, because you can see that it looks quite restrictive to me. And I think this could be an opportunity while I've got this phase to open this up a bit, let, it, let this engine breathe a bit better when I finally get it running. So I open up that exhaust port. Uh, the diameter on that is probably 3 mil, something like that. So reasonable amount. And I, you know, I, I, this is the first smart engine I've worked on. So we'll see what happens. On the inlet, I don't really port it too much, but I just clean up any rough edges just to help fuel flow and air mixture in there. And once I've done that, again, you don't want any filings or grit in there when it's put back together. So I'd use some degrease spray, hose it all out several times, uh, blow it out with air. And at this stage, you know, then I know for sure that this is nice and clean and it's ready uh, to be reassembled again. So at this stage, you know, I've, I've pulled the head apart, I've ported it, uh, cleaned it up and the last thing I need to do before reassembly is lap the valves in. So I just use a fine lapping compound. I put the valves in each of their respective holes that they came from and you can see here it doesn't really take much to lap them. So a bit of light paste, a few turns, remove them, wipe them down and what I'm looking for is the width of the contact surface and is it all the way around the valve and you know, as I've mentioned in an earlier video, this engine is, is in pretty good nick. So um, I do this to all the valves and then wipe that out with a bit of metho or, or some other spray just to make sure there's no grit left in there. So once all that's done, all I've got to do is replace the valve stem seals and here they are here. And they, they, um, they just push on quite easily actually. So at this point, I've, I've replaced all the valves, there's just one left. Now this is on the piston that failed, and I've read, I believe this could be a common fault as well, but if you look at this valve clearance on this, just one valve, and I can only suspect that a bit of grit or something from that failed piston got up there and wore it out. So I managed to find a brand new valve guide, and it does appear that all of the wears in the guide itself, not on the valve, so the valve was fine. Now I made this tool as well in my lathe, just so that when I knock it out, I'm only uh, contacting the outer surface because I don't want to burr any of that inside edge. And to push it out, all I do is I'm using a 5mm stainless steel socket head bolt, which just fits in there perfectly. And then in the end of that bolt, I'll use my air hammer and hopefully this will just push out. So I wasn't really sure how difficult this is going to be because sometimes these can be extremely tight. So I get my air hammer. And you know what, it's come out no problem. And to be honest, it's quite a small valve guide, so I wasn't sure what to expect, but um, thankfully it, it didn't cause me any trouble whatsoever. The last couple of mil, I just use a pin punch because the air hammer diameter was a bit big for that hole. So there's the old one, very worn. And here's the new one, slip my little tool over it. I position it, just tap it in lightly just to make sure it's in the right place and it's square. And then once I have it square, again put my air hammer on it, hammer it in, and then I use my vernier just to make sure I've got the depth right. And uh, this one goes in, no problem whatsoever. And so, you know, uh, if you've got worn valve guides, it's not the end of the world, as you can see here definitely doable. If you don't have an air hammer, you can buy one of those off of eBay. I paid about $40 Australian for that. So there it is there. Um, you can see from the bottom uh, where that guide just pokes through. I put the valve in there just to check and it fits perfectly and there's just a minimal amount of clearance for oil. So putting these together, I put um, assembly lube on the valve stem 
push it in with the with the valve guide seal in place and that seal will actually hold that when you turn it over so this is the last valve but they're all the same you can see inside there the valve stem seal put the washer that the spring sits on put the spring in as I said before it doesn't matter which way around that goes yeah once that's in put the retaining washer on get my uh, spring compressor tool and you compress that spring so it reveals the top of the valve itself and then what I do is I use a bit of grease and a small screwdriver and I the grease uh, actually just holds uh, the clip onto the screwdriver like this just to allow me to position it I don't use a magnet because it's too hard to get off and it'll pull the uh, clip away when you remove it so I just gently put it in the right spot undo the spring compressor and um, that one's seated and basically it's job done once I get the spring tool off all I've really do is um, check it's seated properly give it a wipe down put some assembly lube inside inside there just for the um, the valve bucket and put the valve bucket in and um, this head is basically completely rebuilt now so that's the head done uh, the worn valve guide is done the engines been re reboard I've got new pistons new rings new gaskets new everything and uh, in the next video I will reassemble this engine ready for its first start stay tuned